I've had more people ask me about this finish right here. So that's what we're fixing to do. I painted this with just the stone coat countertop, undercoat in white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna fog my edges and I'm using just the Rust-Oleum Ivory um, and I'm gonna just lightly fog. Okay, this is what I don't want you guys to do and I'll do it at this end. Don't do this. See that hard line right there? You don't wanna do that. That's gonna, sh that's gonna kinda penetrate through to your finish if your finish is not really opaque. All right, so I'm just gonna come very lightly. And again, the reason I'm doing this is because I know that my finish is gonna be opaque. I know that the additives that I'm putting into the epoxy is gonna be an opaque mixture. But I also know that the thinnest part on my finish is gonna be the edges where the epoxy rolls over. So right where that epoxy rolls over and breaks over, that area right there is gonna be the thinnest of the whole piece. That's why we always round over our countertops with a quarter inch round over bit. We router that out so we don't have a 90 degrees so our epoxy will flow over. All right, so that's why I'm fogging the edges so when it does roll over, I'm seeing this color. And I'm not seeing white. This is how we get away with only having two colors of the undercoat, white and black. That way I don't have to have every single color of base color for every finish that I do. Okay, so I'm gonna let that dry a few minutes. And I'm gonna mix up my mica powders. Now, when you're mixing up colors and you're using mica powder, you can put your epoxy in the cup and then add your mica powder. When you do that, the only problem is your mica powder kinda stays on top of the surface. You try to stir it, it floats, you can't get it mixed up really well. Um, so Erica with Artist Till Death gave me a amazing pro tip and I've used it ever since. So I've already put my mica powder in the cup, okay? It's in the cup, it's nice and dry. Now, get up close, Kenny, I wanna show them this. If I were to pour the epoxy in the cup right now without doing the slurry, which is what I'm fixing to do, the epoxy is gonna get caught in this little, uh, I guess like a little ditch looking thing, right here in the bottom, and it's gonna be really hard as I'm stirring to get that epoxy out of there and get it stirred up correctly, all right? And then what happens is if you don't stir your mica powder correctly or all the way, when you pour it out, you start getting these little uh, starburst little things. Um, and it's almost like when you do brownie mix, you mix it up, you pour it in the pan, and then you have these little dry spots of your brownie mix. So, and yes, I do do brownie mix out of a box because I don't cook. All right, so what we're gonna do to avoid that is we're gonna come in here with plain isopropyl alcohol, and we're gonna make a slurry. I don't wanna make it runny. I just wanna kinda, and I wanna get it a little bit more than just a paste. And that way I can really get it out of those edges. So then when I put the epoxy in there, it's gonna stir so much easier and mix and I'm not gonna get those little, so see how it's sticking to my, my cup? Can you see that my, my stick? I wanna add a little bit more to that. I want it a little bit more runny than what that paste was. All right. I kind of like that a little bit better. Can y'all see that? Mm. All right, okay. All right, now I'm gonna add the epoxy. Now when I mix it, it's gonna mix so much easier. When I mix in a cup, I'll mix and I'll do my sides. I'll mix, do my sides, 
and mix. All right, I'm gonna give this to Michelle and she can help me finish mixing it. Got it? Yep. And then I'm gonna do a slurry on this one. This is white mica powder. So the first one was pearl mica powder. I sell these on my website, rk3designs.com. This is white mica powder. The stone coat countertop white mica powder. What happens if you make it too runny? Yeah, so what happens? Mm -hmm. uh, nothing, really. I mean, it's not, I've never had it mit, had it to where it was so runny that the alcohol affected my finish. And actually, if you do make it a little more runny, it, it's a lot easier it's to smoother. stir. It's smoother to, to yeah, stir. Yeah, it's a smoother to stir. Okay, here we go. So I'm just kind of laying it out in a striation. Whoop! And you can drop your cup like me. <laughs> See, anybody can do this, y'all. Anybody. And there's not, there's really no rhyme or reason. Rhyme or reason. For her madness. Yeah, madness. That is the key. Okay, so at this point, you can decide if you want to trial it on, also known as trial it on. And in Texas, trial. You're going to trial it on. Don't judge me. All right, so if you want to trial it, guys, you can. You just want to be really careful not to meld too much together because I want separation in the colors. Most of the time, honestly, I don't trial. I use my hands. So, um, you're welcome to do that as well. I like to use my hands because I don't have to chop afterwards with the brush. And chopping, I mean, not chopping eliminates 100% the chance that I'm going to get a brush bristle in my finish. And I feel like it cuts down on your bubbles as well. I do, yeah, absolutely. And I like how I can, y'all notice how I'm running my hand over the edge and I'm taking my fingers and I'm pushing the epoxy under the edge. Now I'm helping that epoxy to run over the edge and not pull up. And it gives me a much easier edge because the epoxy is gonna already start to run Torch. We're gonna need a torch. Where uh, epoxy's already been. So that's another reason. Now, you notice I'm going back and forth in a striation. I'm not melding it like this, which is what I do in a lot of finishes. But this finish, I want it to be, everything to be in a striation straight line. My mica powders are uh, suspended in the material. I'm gonna talk for just a minute because I kinda want uh, my material to set up just a little bit. So this is a good time that I kinda tell you guys about uh, the stages of the mica powders. So I'm sure some of y'all have heard this before, especially if you've come to my classes. Uh, we talk about this a lot. When you first put mica powder in resin, it's like putting sugar in iced tea and stirring it up, okay? So, uh, okay, if you're not from the South, pretend you are. We put sugar in our tea, okay? So you shake it up and you stir it up and you look and you see these little particles swirling and they go down to the bottom. Right now, that's the stage that this epoxy is in. My, mac my mica powders have been mixed up and they're falling to the bottom, all right? So, they may look really cool right now, but if we wait 30 minutes and we don't re-agitate that, it's gonna become a very, very flat, very, very soft finish. And that's a gorgeous finish. You don't have to change it, that's, that's a beautiful finish. But if you wait, say, 30 to 45 minutes and you re-agitate or you re-stir it, now it's going to be like those same particles in syrup, pancake syrup. So now you've got a thicker 
uh, amount in your cup. And when you pour those par particles in and you stir it, they're still going to stay suspended, but they are still going to fall to the bottom. Okay. It just takes longer um, than it did with your first stage. Now, the last stage is uh, a stage that we use a lot when we do like hammered metal finishes where you really want that textury look. That's like cold honey. And then you put your particles in. You put your particles in cold honey and you stir your honey, your particles are suspended. They're not moving. So a lot of the finishes that we do when I tell you guys to wait 30, 45 minutes, even an hour before you go to the next step, that's the cold honey stage. We're not gonna be anywhere near that on this finish. I'm gonna torch real quick just to get the micro bubbles out. We have, um, still have separation of color. So me mixing, you still have separation between your pearl and your white. All right, I didn't mix it all together to where I have one color. I still have a lot of separations on my colors. I'm gonna come in with just leather brown. You can do this guys with any color spray paint. Most of the colors are what I used in this piece in the background. So this is gonna be my, my mid-tone brown, leather brown. And I'm just gonna put some on a stick and I'm just gonna start dragging it through. Now this is what's important about this finish. You don't wanna put too much paint on your surface. You want that to kind of just float on top. You're gonna push it down. Now, if you'll notice, I'm doing two different ways on my stick. Sometimes I go straight up and down, which makes a little bit uh, finer line. And then sometimes I'll go and lay it like this. See how that lays it out flat? Tell them what color you have now. I've got espresso, satin espresso. I'm gonna make another striation and on purpose, I'm leaving a space, a gap between, and I'm gonna kinda show you how I'm gonna fix it so it doesn't look like a zebra. Now, you can, if you want a little more boldness in your lines, you can take your spray paint and you can spray it. Cheater, but know that I'm really gonna work it in because I want to be able to see through to that um, finish, all right? So you see how I blended that in? I'm not leaving huge amounts of uh, spray paint. All we've done so far is drag this paint and look at already the designs that it's making all by itself. We haven't even really done anything. We're letting the spray paint and the, um, micas, work and the micas kind of work together. Fight each other. Fight each other. All right, so if you do a striation right next to the edge like this, like I'm fixing to do, you're gonna see as the epoxy self levels, because it's gonna continue to move, that your very edge is gonna start rolling over. Your edges aren't gonna have a striation. Now, it's really hard for me to do this on a three quarter inch piece of wood, um, but what I would do if I were doing this for a job is I would, before I put the epoxy down, after I fogged my edges with the ivory, I would come back with a paintbrush, a chip brush, and I would actually take the colors that I'm using here and I would do kind of a faux striation painting on the sides. Because what's gonna happen is my epoxy is gonna get really thin on the edge. So you're gonna be able to see through this. And that way, when you see through, you're gonna, your eye is gonna see striations of the colors that are already in the, the surface of your, of your top. So it's kind of like you're tricking the eye um, to the colors that are underneath. Now, I don't even worry about messing with my edges until it starts to set up because I know this epoxy is gonna continue to, to move. So it really doesn't bother me that it's going over the side. I don't wanna mess with it too much because then I get cloudy edges and it starts to look muddy. So I don't wanna address those edges too much. All right, 
So you can see just by us adding two colors how this looks really cool. But wait, there's more. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with a little bit of the ivory. Okay, so I'm just kind of coming back in there and adding a little bit of highlight. So now after we've added a little bit of the um, ivory, we're gonna come in and Michelle's gonna come in with a little bit of a metallic dark copper. You wanna be really careful, guys, adding metallics that it doesn't overpower your piece. Still, all I'm doing is dragging paint through the epoxy. That's all I'm doing. I haven't added any kind of special other products, just the paint. And all you need is a hint. It doesn't take much. Breaking the rules. All right. So I'm gonna add a little black. Now when I add black, I'm gonna be very conscious of how much I add of it. I'm not gonna add a lot. Now Michelle, she's coming in with the oregano. Now I am adding this with the edge of my stick so that I'm getting a little bit more detailed. Now let me show y'all something you don't wanna do. When you go to add paint on your stick, don't get so much paint that you're dripping, okay? You don't want that. Tap it off, you don't want it to drip. A little wrap a tap tap. Add a little wrap a tap tap. And you don't have to run it through the whole vein. Make it look more organic by just putting it in, in certain spots. I'm gonna do a pretty dark black right here. I want this to kind of stick out a little bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit more black right there. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. I'm liking that. Okay, so now I have a little bit of extra, uh, the pearl epoxy left in the cup. All right, now, if you notice, we're putting spray paint in the, in the veins. The spray paint's not really moving a whole lot. It's kind of sort of staying where we want it. When you start adding epoxy into the veins, now, because we're putting more product on the surface, it wants to level out, self-level. Now, by putting epoxy in the veins, I'm gonna cause my veins to get bigger, all right? But that's okay, so I'm just gonna run some pearl epoxy in there. You wanna do the white? Sure. Michelle? And you don't have to do this. Like I said, this is just an option. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we're gonna open it up because I really want that background to play a part of this finish. And I'm very lightly gonna kinda open up the veins and make them very, very soft. You don't have to do this part. If you want your veins to be more distinct and you like that striation, you can most definitely not do this part. But look at that black, how we soften it out. Now this would be a really good, if you're doing a whole kitchen like this, it would be a good idea to have someone coming behind you doing this as you're maybe still laying down color. All right, so that's pretty That's pretty open. I'm gonna leave that. See this part that's real tight right here? It's really, it's really uh, thick or opaque. I'm gonna open that up. I'm coming right over the top of the epoxy and I'm keeping the gun moving. That's the most important part, guys. If you hold your gun in one spot, you're gonna get your epoxy really hot once you get your epoxy really hot, it becomes very fluid and you lose total control of being able to move it. So if you're not getting the vein to look the way you want it, stop, back off, let it cool down, and then go back. I'm gonna continue with this and open it up a little bit. Now, I told you guys a while ago that I was gonna show you if you don't want to be distinct lines between your uh, veins, how you can make, kind of make that soft. Now, one way you can make it to where it doesn't look like it's really, it's really in lines is to move your veins out and kind of bring them together very soft. Another thing that you can do is before you start to use your heat gun, take your hand 
And I'm gonna do that to these two lines right here. You can see there's separation here. All right, I'm gonna take my hands and I'm very softly gonna bring that, those lines together. And then when I use the heat gun, you'll see how they meld a little bit more together and there's not really distinct lines. It's more, the, the finish is more, um, I guess, melded together. I, I prefer them actually to have separation in the lines. I just think it looks a little bit cooler, but this is a way that, this is one other way that you can do it. So now let's, let's move to these two veins where I melded it with my hands. Now when I come in, I'm gonna open it up, but I'm also going to take that heat gun and I'm gonna move the colors in between the veins. So my pieces kind of meld together a little bit. It, all I've done really is just soften the center. And if you don't wanna open the vein up as much as I'm opening up, you want it to be more distinct, then don't, you, you certainly don't have to use the heat gun. That's just gonna really soften. Look at the difference between these two veins and these two veins. See how this one's a lot softer because I kind of melded them together as opposed to the distinction here. I, I like the distinction. So I've showed you how to move it with a heat gun. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it with a torch. If you use a torch, you have to be very quick. The torch is gonna give you a different look because the, the spray paint that's sitting on top reacts to the torch. All right, so if you haven't used your torch, like say that you're doing this finish and you hadn't used your torch yet, uh, or when you go to torch your bubbles, uh, turn it on kind of away from your finish because a lot of times dirt and dust will settle in your nozzle. And then when you turn it on for the first time, it puts out dust onto your surface. So make sure if you, the first time you turn on your torch that you turn it away from your piece. Okay, so now, I don't know if Kenny's gonna be able to get this. I'm gonna come in really quick and I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna move and I'm gonna get away. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna move and I'm gonna get away. And I want you to see kind of how it makes the paint react. All right, here we go. Now, this spray paint's been sitting in this epoxy for a little bit, so I'm not quite getting the design that I was wanting you guys to see. So I'm gonna put some more fresh spray paint down. I'm gonna add a little bit of oregano right there. And then I'm gonna hit it with the gun. I'm trying to get it to do some cells. A lot, oh, there he goes. Okay, a lot of times, see how this is selling up right here? Okay, so a lot of times when you use spray paint, and I'm gonna tap it right here, I've got a little bit of a dry spot right there, so I'm just gonna come in with some epoxy. Um, when you use your torch on spray paint, you kind of get these little cells, all right? So that's just kind of a cool benefit that you can get um, with using a torch. Okay, let's talk about the edges real quick. So we're still a little bit fresh to, to talk about the edges. If you don't like this look of it naturally falling over, what you can do is you'll just come in, I'm gonna wet my fingers, okay, a little bit with epoxy. I'm gonna run my fingers along the edges. Now remember, if you were doing this for a customer, you would have already fogged your edges with a striated design so your eye is gonna be seeing the color underneath. We've, it's, it, this thing's gonna continue to move for an hour or so. So, uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, all of these products as far, except the spray paint, obviously, but the epoxy, the mica powders, the rollers, UTC, UTC um, uh, all, trials, all that good stuff, you can find on my website, rk3designs, Dot com. Even sample boards coming soon. Yes, pretty soon I'm gonna be actually selling what? sample boards. So they'll be, they'll be cut and routered. They'll be the same size sample boards that we use in our classes. Uh, they're 12 by 16 sample boards. 
They're the sample boards that I take when I go to a customer's house. They'll be routered. They will not be painted. Um, that way you guys can paint them, your you choice. know, whatever your choice is. But those will be on the website uh, up pretty soon, as soon as Kenny gets all the boards. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative.